Hey everyone, so in this video I'm going to be talking about stretch marks. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to anyone who may be new. I would love it if you would join in with us here by subscribing. And my name is Bonnie and my videos are mainly focused currently on pregnancy, specifically being pregnant with triplets. So I also go through our whole um, kind of journey of how we got here, us going through IVF, us having a failed IVF, us having successful IVF, and now pregnant with triplets. So, but in this video, I'm gonna be talking about stretch marks. And before I jump into it, I want to kind of give a little preface of saying that I think there can be a lot of negative connotation and maybe people feeling ashamed or less than or even like unattractive from having stretch marks from a pregnancy. So this video is not about promoting that or not about saying that stretch marks are negative or bad and you should avoid them at all costs and do everything you can to not get them and all this stuff. That's not what this video is about. And I want those of you out there who, you know, have stretch marks or who, you know, may get stretch marks to not feel like you are less than or you did something wrong or anything like that. So this video is not about promoting that at all. And I know it's a tricky topic, I feel like, because it varies so much among women. You know, some women get zero stretch marks. Some women get a lot of stretch marks. Some get a few, you know, it's just all across the board. And us as women, we can struggle with comparing ourselves to each other and thinking, well, they didn't get stretch marks and I did. So therefore I'm left with these ugly scars or something. Uh, I am not about promoting that message. I think that any woman and any pregnancy is a miracle. You know, however you got pregnant, it's a miracle. And if you end up with stretch marks because of that pregnancy, it's really just a reminder of what your body did and the miracle that happened. So I just want to make sure to make that clear and that, you know, for me, this video is really focusing about caring for your skin because especially in your be belly area, it's going through a lot when you're pregnant and you get a lot of stretching, a lot of pulling, a lot of tension there. So this video is gonna be focused on really how to care for your skin. And it's not meaning that you will not get stretch marks or you will reduce them or whatever. It's just caring for your skin, whatever the results are. From what I've seen and researched and stuff like that, is that stretch marks are highly correlated with genetics. So if your mom had them, you probably will have them. You know, not that it's a guarantee, but it's, you know, high, genetics plays a huge part in stretch marks. Now my mom does not have any stretch marks, but she was never pregnant with triplets. So I really don't know for me what will end up happening. I know uh, currently I am 27 weeks and six days so i'll be 28 weeks tomorrow and i have no stretch marks as of yet i you know kind of was going into this triplet pregnancy expecting to have stretch marks but who knows i mean i may not but i think with triplets it's just there is a lot of stretching so i would be very surprised if uh, none show up but as of right now, none are there. But again, I think that has a lot, a lot, lot to do with genetics. Okay, so jumping into these four things that I do to care for my skin since being pregnant. Number one is hydration. So drinking a lot of water. And that's good for so many things. But it's definitely good for your skin, even for, you know, when you think if your skin is dry and all that stuff, it just wrinkles more. It just, 
you know, all of these things. And so, you know, the tension that it's going through as it's stretching, it's just so good for it to be well hydrated. And one of the best ways you can do that is to actually have that come from the inside out. So drinking a lot of water and also avoiding or, you know, really reducing drinks that have a diuretic effect. So things with caffeine, with high sugar, stuff like that. So like coffees, teas, sodas, juices, things like that you would want to reduce. Now, if you have a hard time drinking water, there are so many ways that, you know, you can naturally enhance the flavor of your water versus using one of those little powdery drink mixes. You can just add some frozen strawberries in there. You can add lemon, you can add cucumber, frozen blueberries, you know, different things like that. And that can just, you know, if you do have a hard time drinking water, that could probably help there. So those are just a few ideas. So number two is eating healthy fats. So whether that's through taking like a fish oil supplement, something like that, which I do that every day, but also eating it, including it in your diet, you know, from plant-based healthy fats like coconut oil, avocado, nuts and seeds, but also animal fats as well. As long as they're sourced well from a healthy animal that was able to roam around and eat what it's designed to eat, like cows eating grass, so getting butter from those type of cows, or like whole fat, full fat yogurt from those type of cows. And also chickens that were able to roam around and be raised on a pasture so that they can scrounge around for bugs and stuff like that. Chickens are not vegetarian. They eat bugs and they eat grass as well. But that just is going to give that egg so much more nutrients and so much better for you. So another thing is like fish, so wild caught, you know, you really wanna stick with wild caught, like salmon, don't get the farm raised ones. And also when you're eating salmon, it's really good to include the skin. So you don't have to be afraid of that skin. And that's where a lot of the omega-3 fats are, is in the skin of the fish. So those are just a few ideas of some healthy animal fats. I could kind of go on and on about fats because I feel like they've had such a bad rap and our body needs them. It does a lot of stuff for your body, but a big thing is it is helping your cells and your skin is like constantly sloughing off old cells and regenerating new cells. So to be able to have those healthy fats to help those cells to be able to function properly, regenerate properly is gonna help your skin to be able to function properly as well. So number three is I do a body scrub in the shower. And also number three includes showering. I do not shower every day. And if you look up online, if you just Google it, research, most things out there will tell you, you do not need to shower every day. It's really not good for your skin. It dries it out, the warm water, the washing away of the natural oils that you have on your skin you know, using harsh soaps and stuff like that just really dries out your skin and is not good for it. But when I do take a shower, I use a body scrub. I actually got mine from TJ Maxx. You can make your own very easily as well. And, but I made sure it had like really pure ingredients and all of that. I will actually link down below a good option from Amazon. But I use a little bit and I very gently, so gently is the key word, scrub it on my belly area, my hip area, my butt area, my legs. And just to kind of get the blood flow going there, kind of wake it up a little bit. And, you know, just to help even slough off some of those dead skin cells. But again, you want to be very gentle. You don't want to harm or cause more like inflammation or irritation to your skin. And the fourth thing I do is I use a body butter. And this body butter, I actually did make myself, and there's lots of lotions and body butters you can find in the store, but I really wanted to make my own because I wanted to know exactly what was in it and I wanted it to be very pure. So I found this recipe in the Mama Natural Pregnancy book, which I will link down below. It has some really great resources, especially those of you who are interested in you know, what are some of the more natural kind of things I can do during a pregnancy. I got this recipe from there and I will actually show you how I make it in, at the end of this video. 
So you'll get to see, you know, what goes in it and how it's done and all of that. And it's been really good. It's really like calming, really soothing. So if you have like itchiness and stuff like that, and I haven't had much itchiness, but you know, a little bit here and there, but it's definitely just very soothing to put on your skin. And actually even my husband uses it. He has a little bit of eczema patches. And so he will use it on that and has really enjoyed it for that. And it really could be used anywhere that you would need like a lotion, you know, on your feet, <laughs> on your elbows or wherever you have like dry skin and stuff like that. I think it's a really good all purpose kind of body butter. It's not just for a pregnant belly. Okay, I hope you enjoy the rest of this video and just seeing how to make it. And I will see you guys in the next one.